What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder, where we talk all things Marvel and MCU. I'm your host, Warren Thompson, and today is Moon Knight Day. Tonight at 12 a.m. Pacific Time, Moon Knight is coming out on Disney+. And reminder, don't forget about my watch party. We are starting them up again. We're probably going to start around 11.30 p.m. Pacific Time tonight. So, be sure to tune in, we'll be watching it together. Then of course, I'll be having my after party discussion talking about what we just watched. Now, I fortunately have been blessed to be able to see the first four episodes of Moon Knight. No spoilers in this review. This is my review, won't be talking about spoilers. Obviously the first episode hasn't really come out yet by the time you're watching this in the morning, it's before. And I don't want to spoil anything, obviously, but this is my review. What I'm going to be talking about here is the overall arc of the show, what I think of it so far, how it's violent, how it's dark, how it's funny, and how the acting is phenomenal. Now, right away, you do kind of feel a horror vibe when watching Moon Knight. And it's not too much because I know some people have been asking me like, well, I don't really like horror. I don't really like horror either. And it's not too much by any means, but it is definitely a different feel that I actually welcome. Marvel Studios has managed to continuously make amazing movies and shows that aren't exactly the same as what we've seen before. And I think they're even better at that now. This truly is a different show. Never before have we really addressed any type of mental illness in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but hey, as you've seen from the trailers, this shouldn't be a spoiler, there's more than one person inside Oscar Isaac's body there. Mark Spector, uh, there's Stephen Grant, you know, I'm not gonna say any, anything else past that about his mental illness because they'll talk about it during the, the show, but it is cool to see him switch between Steven and Mark. It, it's really cool. And I have to praise Oscar Isaac because it's phenomenal acting. I mean, he's a phenomenal actor. Everything that he's been in is truly pretty dang good. Uh, I don't think I've ever walked away thinking Oscar Isaac didn't really do a good job. He's done a fantastic job and he brought that into Moon Knight, which is great because he's in the MCU now. And I hope this character stays around for a really, really long time. But the way he can just switch it and Stephen Grant, Mark Spector, like it's really, really cool. And I give him a lot of praise for that. Same thing with Ethan Hawke. Speaking of like that horror aspect, like Ethan Hawke's character is a cult leader. That's what he is. And it's kind of creepy, but he's also charming, which makes it even more creepy because it's like, wow, this guy's like so, so creepy. He's like leading this cult, but he's also very charming, which is also creepy because that makes him better at what he does it makes people more susceptible to following him and you'll see how that all plays out within the first couple of episodes now the first two episodes the first one is very much a hey let's introduce everybody um let's introduce who moon knight is let's introduce you know mark specter Stephen Grant, you know, basically introduce, you know, it's the start, it's the pilot, uh, but it's still, it's really, really good. I'm not saying it's not a good episode, but the second episode, it really kind of like really picks up. And in the third and fourth episode, that's when things kind of like, I'm like, wow, I'm in the show. I was in it from one and two, but like when three and four hit, you're like, okay, all right, we're here. This is Moon Knight. This is violence. This is, uh, this is humor. <laughs> this is, uh, this is dark. It's different than what the MCU was offered before, and that's really, really, really good. Now, I wanna say it is dark and it does have this horror aspect to it, but it is different than WandaVision because some people say, well, you know, we started with WandaVision, that kinda introduced the supernatural side. And yes, I, I totally agree. It brought in Agatha Harkness, they showed us the Salem Witches, and they showed us some dark magic, right? This is different, it's filmed different because WandaVision still was like filmed like a Marvel project, which of course it was, but this has some scenes where it's like, wow, that's um, that's different. Like cinematically, we haven't seen that for Marvel Studios. And there, there's a lot of parts that truly are creepy, especially with Conchu. We've seen some of those parts in the trailer. You're sitting there like, wow, like this is actually, it, it's creepy. Now, one thing I will say, something that I truly love is this show's ability to bring you in 
and get invested in it. This is the stuff that like we had for WandaVision when we were talking about Mephisto and like everything that was going to happen at the end. There was so much anticipation because we didn't actually know what was going to happen. Same thing with Loki. We thought Kang, but we're like, wow, what is actually going on here? Are the timekeepers real, et cetera, et cetera. This does that with Stephen Grant slash Mark Spector slash Moon Knight. This does this really well because Yes, he's got a mental illness. Yes, there's, you know, multiple personalities, dissociative identity disorder going on. And you're like, he thinks he's going crazy. And then you question like, well, is he? Is is this real? Is Khonshu real? Or is he making this up in his mind? Is it not real? It it really does grab you and make you think that, which really had me kind of like on the edge of my seat because I'm like, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. You know, is he just gone mad, which I think is something he says at some point, or, you know, is he really the avatar of, of Khonshu, the Egyptian moon god? Um, and I will say like all the Egyptian stuff pulled into it. I find that really cool. I've always find that pretty fascinating myself and, uh, it's, it's really good. Now I will say show's pretty funny and it's again to Oscar Isaac. He, Stephen Grant as a character is really, really funny. And it's like, it's funny because you like him so much, but you're kind of laughing at him at the same time because, you know, he's kind of this quiet, reserved, shy guy. You know, people kind of don't remember his name. And you've seen in the trailer, like his boss kind of, you know, makes fun of him, teases him a little bit and you like feel bad for him. But then he does things and you just like you laugh at him and the humor really does come from him and Oscar Isaac's performance. And I must say it, it's 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 pretty dang good. Now, action. There's a decent amount of action in it. I actually like how the first episode kind of kicks you off with some of the action. I like how it ends with some of the action. And then when we get into the second episode, it really picks it up. And like I said, the third and the fourth are like, oof, like we're getting into it now. But it's a good combination, I think, of like CGI and hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like I... I think that's really, really good. Now you are going to see some scenes that um, will be not familiar, but will will feel familiar. We haven't seen them before, but you're gonna think like, wow, is this tied into this? Is it tied into this? Which again is really, really cool because this show does not mention like anything else in the MCU at all, nothing else. Right. There's no like, oh, yeah, Captain America did that. You know, it's, it's, there's nothing with the exception of the Marvel Studios logo. Y you would probably not know this is a Marvel Studios property, which is kind of cool because I think obviously it's connected. Right. It's Moon Knight. I hope he goes on to become an Avenger or something. West Coast Avenger Defender <laughs> you know, something they could throw him anywhere. Midnight Suns. Um, but it but it's it's disconnected. And that's actually what Oscar Isaac and Ethan Hawke said kind of drove them to this project is that it's actually pretty disconnected from the MCU. And I actually like this because I do think eventually, maybe in the last episode, they're going to pull something in. Maybe in a post credit scene, we'll see, you know, Doctor Strange say he's recruiting for the Midnight Suns. And, and what this shows us is that a PG-13 movie can actually be kind of brutal. It's a show, but... I'm speaking of if there's like a Midnight Suns movie or something like that coming on, it doesn't have to be rated R. It can kind of push that boundary of violence and kind of horror and creepiness without actually going to rated R because I don't think Marvel Studios wants to do that. Key point, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is supposed to be the first horror project from Marvel, or I should say a horror movie because Moon Knight's coming out before and it's got major horror vibes, but it's PG-13 and I think they're going to do this extremely well to the point to where they don't have to go to the rated R because I know there's probably a lot of younger viewers who won't be able to watch them if they're rated R and they are keeping those people in mind. But overall, I really like this. I really, really, really like this series. I think it's going to be people's favorite. Some people, I think some people will say, you know, it's like a top three or something like that. Um, I'm going to have to wait till I see the last two final episodes to decide for myself. But if you're watching this after you watch the first episode, let me know what you thought. And if you haven't watched it yet, if you're here before, let me know how excited you are for it because I'm really excited for everybody to watch it. Seriously, from the violence to the action, to the horror aspect, to the psychological thriller aspect of it and to its comedy, 
it's a pretty great show and I'm really, really excited for everybody to watch it. So let me know how excited you are in the comments down below. Don't forget to stop by the watch party tonight. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on all things MCU. For live updates, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.